Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Seems like I got back from my multi-day hike in one piece, which is good because I don't actually always come back in that way. This time I didn't even have to give my friend the doctor a call to come and take a look at me. So I'm doing good. And when I came back, I saw something. Well, first of all, I saw that my videos uploaded. So you didn't miss anything over the last couple of days, which was great. I uploaded them before I left and they just got put up for you, which I planned, which worked out fine. And I looked Looked through my Marvel Twitter feed while I came back just to see what idiotic things were going on at Marvel while I was away, and I ran across something that I really just I felt like I had to go over. I know um, it seems like it might be beating a dead horse with their Marvel advertisement and what they're directed towards, but this thing it just it seemed to me to confirm a lot of what I've been saying over the last little while, and I want to go over it. It's called Earth's Mightiest Show, and it's it's a little show that a little advertisement that they put up in the Marvel website and it's fairly new it's on its first season episode number 26 which is the one I'm looking at and I'll put the link in the description for that and it again it might be my confirmation bias but it seems to me like this is just directing you towards the fact that what I've been saying about Marvel and how it is directing everything towards its movies is really coming out through and through in this little advertisement show now this little show is about 15 minutes and the first 15 minutes of what it does it goes through um, there is an exhibit at Mopop Seattle now Mopop Seattle it is a nonprofit museum of it says here of music science fiction fantasy video games and more and the exhibit that's going on right now is Marvel universe of superheroes so you have um three people on this show they're basically they're the equivalent of you know and looks like the experience of uh your local weatherman you know that's that's the kind of um i don't know you i don't know if i'd call it acting or not but that's the kind of acting that these people are actually capable of and they're going through this exhibit for about the first fifth, 10 of the 15 minutes of this show. Now, first of all, I got to say, you look at them, these people themselves. You have people who would die in order to work for Marvel. I mean, you have fans that would love to work for Marvel and to do these kinds of things for Marvel. I'm sure there are people out there that you could grab onto and get them to do these things. And they would show such a genuine excitement that it would bleed through in everything that they do. And I find, uh, uh, quite honestly, that if you want to get somebody to do something, if you want to get somebody interested in something, the best way to do so is for you to show genuine interest in what you are presenting them. Really, honestly, that is at the base level. I think the easiest and the best way to get someone excited about something is for you to be excited about it. And these three people that are doing this show, you can tell that they are not really excited about anything that they are saying. Now, first of all, it's all scripted. I mean, they couldn't go out and do a unscripted um, little bit of entertainment for you, a little bit of advertisement and put together the best parts. Because honestly, if you or me as a normal Marvel fan went to this museum exhibit and actually went to go, got to go through it, we would be excited. I would imagine we would be. And it wouldn't be a fake excitement. But these people are fake excited. And not only are they fake excited, but everything that they are saying, like every word that they are saying is scripted. You can tell. They they are very wooden. I mean, they try not to be wooden, but these, these people, these three people, they are very wooden in their acting. And so that's telling right there. I mean, really, really telling. Because, again, as I was saying in the video that I posted while it's away, um, you have these people that work for Marvel, and they're the equivalent of the people who work at the DMV. That's, that's the kind of excitement that they have for their work, honestly. And you've been to the DMV. You know how much excitement the people who work there have to be there and to do the things that they're doing. Sure, you probably get somebody who'll put on a smile for you and actually say, oh, this is a good thing that you're getting this done. But you know they don't want to be there. And 
That's the level of these people as they present this history of Marvel for you. They're, they don't want to be there. They're not excited to be there. They're not present, presenting this stuff in an exciting way. Far from it, they are presenting it in a way that is so scripted that you can just obviously tell that it is scripted for every word. And then you move into what they say itself and how they go through this exhibit. How do they go through this exhibit? Well, they start, first of all, by giving you a picture and um, describing the uniform that was used in the movies for Black Panther and some of his guard. And that's where they start. They start from this little blurb about the movies and how beautiful these things are and their biggest selling movie over the last little while or we'll say at the very least they're most popular in the eyes of most people so that's how they start it's very small and then they move back to the history of marvel comics and they have one of these three uh, presenters go over the history of marvel comics by going through part of the exhibit which looks to me like it's the main part of the exhibit but they only give it one third of what they have for their show and they go over original art from the comics that were actually published and well they, they start with Wolverine they give you a couple of Wolverine pictures because of course there's a big push for the um, what the return of Wolverine in the comics right now and I would say that that big push uh, for the return of Wolverine in the comics is simply to lead you to the new tie-in of X-Men to the MCU which is going to be through Wolverine I, I'll bet my bottom dollar on that right now it's going to be through a new Wolverine and they move very quickly from that to Spider-Man and then they go on from that to Ant-Man and the Vision and they show you all of these original pieces uh, of uh, art from the comics that were originally in the history so they use that history base to draw you in and they specifically focus on all of those pieces of art that come from comics that will tie you directly into the movies. I mean, there seem to be plenty of other pieces of art there. There are pl plenty of other X-Men pieces of art and all these kinds of things that would draw you in as a Marvel comic reader, but the only ones they really focus on are the ones that are their movie money makers. You got Spider-Man, they give you Ant-Man, of course, because Ant-Man has just come out, and then they give you Vision because, of course, they're still pushing um, Avengers Infinity War on their Twitter website and on their um, Marvel website and they give you these things and that's what they focus on and then at the very end they give you a couple of pieces of original art that have never uh, actually been published one is of hulk again there you go from uh, avengers movie and then they give you their sjw throw in because they have to get their sjw kick in there all the time which is a um, painted poster of jane foster thor even though no one's ever going to remember Jane Foster Thor in five years from now. She's going to be as forgotten as she was when she first came out in that Marvel What If in the early 80s or late 70s, I guess it was. So they move on from that one third to their second section of this little advertisement and they go around the museum and there's a bunch of statues all around the museum that are life-size so you can take selfies with these marvel heroes and the statues that they go to well first of all they go to black panther and they spend a bunch of time with black panther and get a selfie with black panther and then they move on to spider-man and then they move on to their sjw little section of this um I don't know, advertisement, and they show Kamala Khan and Lockjaw, who are right next to each other. Of course, they got to stick those two in for their diversity uh, inclusion. And then they move on to The Thing, which I would say that they had to move on to The Thing because he's probably the biggest one of these um, statues that you can actually take a selfie with. And of course, in the comics they are pushing a little bit the the return of the fantastic four which again is probably going to lead to new fantastic four movies down the line and uh, they also include a couple of smaller ones they include thor but again if you're looking at this uh, at which heroes that they focus on for these um, statues that you can take selfies with of course they're all 
except for the thing i would say either statues from of characters from their movies that you can draw in from the movies or your diversity ones which are the two from marvel rising which again is just a giant ad in order to get you to see these characters uh, in these new movies like captain marvel that are coming out so after that they move on to the next one third and the next one third is of course talking about the movies and they go through all the sections of movie props that they have in this um, museum in this exhibit and the movie props include um, uniform from Captain America Winter Soldier a couple of shields from Captain America uh, you have three sets of armor from uh, Iron Man you have of course you go back to two Black Panthers uh, uniform that they have there. They also have a bunch of Guardians of the Galaxy things. They have two um, two uniforms, I guess, for uh, Hela and Thor from Thor Ragnarok and Mjolnir and all of these things. So the thing is that, again, if you look at the way that this goes, so it starts off with this tiny little blurb about the movies. That's where they want you to focus your attention on right at the beginning. Then they go through the history of Marvel Comics, focusing on the ones that are going to sell you on the movies and uh, make them money. And so it leads all up to the movies because they only focus on the ones that will lead you to the movies. Then they move into to draw in your normies, right? So the section where they draw on the normies because they don't talk about the comics they talk about these selfies you can take selfies with all of these statues which is what they're there for and you take that section and you draw on the normies and then you move back to the movies where you started originally and then they push the movies and it's about the movies and how beautiful these things are from the movies and so yeah that's what i've been saying this is all everything that is being produced by marvel is either an advertisement for a movie or their merchandise from the movies you know it's one or the other so the movies are the money maker everything leads up to the movies they're selling you the movie everything else is just a pre-sale to soften you up for the movies or a post sale in order to keep you spending money after you watch the movies so that's the first 10 minutes of this little show but the, the last five minutes is extremely funny as well because what they do is they have this thing and it's uh, i think it's the second of what they're doing it's not the first time they've done this so they have this little um it's basically a little hawkeye uh comic that they're going through which has extremely bad art it's just awful i think it was written specifically and made specifically for these people i'm not entirely sure i'm not going to have to track it down and look to see if it is but it looks like it was just written for this show so they have this small hawkeye comic right and and well, they got to say right at the first, it's uh, Kate Bishop, the real Hawkeye, they say. Yeah, that drove me insane. Did let me let you know. Yeah, that really made me mad. No, Kate Bishop is not even Hawkeye, let alone the real Hawkeye. But the three of these people, so they, they're back in their studio. So the three of them, they're uh, basically what they're doing is they're reading this comic and showing you the pictures, which are awful for this comic. What it is, what it looks like to me, quite honestly, the way that they do it and, you know, the way that they're joking with each other again in this kind of newsroom banter kind of way is that it's an instructional video. That's really what it looks like. It looks like an instructional video. They are giving you an instructional video in order to teach you how to read a comic book. It's quite literally, that's what it looks like, because, of course, um, as I'm always saying, what they're doing with their comics is that they are they are being instructional that's what they are because they're teaching you something they're not there for actual entertainment they're there to teach you things so first of all in order to teach you the things that they want you to learn they got to teach you how to actually read a comic book and this is they're going through this book and they're laughing and they're telling the jokes and they're explaining the jokes that are in the book and it's an instructional video how to read a comic book it's like sitting down in front of you know your grade oneers and saying okay children now this is where the joke is so everybody laugh now because this is a joke so everybody needs to laugh at this point and then of course we all understand that this is not anything that is too serious okay Richard over there you're being a little bit too serious don't take it too serious it's just a comic book you have to laugh even when it's not actually supposed to be funny so that's what it is it's it's so oh it's so patronizing 
because I could tell you right now that's that's what struck me what this is it's an instructional video of how to read a comic book and it's either to draw on the normies to try to get them to read comic books in order to them to get hooked for the movies or it's to tell us over here in comics gate you know don't be taking these things so seriously they're just comic books you need to read them this way not in your critical way that you're looking at them and trying to pick them apart because you want them to be better no 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 you have to read them this way anyways this whole thing yeah this whole thing just just showed me that yeah marvel what i've been saying about marvel uh how it has been going down the toilets and and how it is just all of the comic books are just a promotional tool in order to draw you into the movies and that your sjwism is just feeding you ideas and trying to pull you in and and shove these things under your noses without you actually engaging your rational mind that's what it seems to me i'll leave the link in the description you want to take 15 minutes out of your day and watch this thing and laugh at it because honestly right now i used to laugh with marvel i don't anymore i just laugh at marvel so i'm gonna leave it there if i gave you anything new to think about hit like hit subscribe and uh leave a comment so you give me something new to think about that would be great as well and i will go back to a more cheery topic uh tomorrow and i will see you later bye